Hello, hello, are you out there? I'm Mark. This is Homebrew Fever Dreams. I actually am rereading this one. It's a little tough on the formatting, so I'm going to just try again from the start. I don't get why you guys bully my character. This is the, the person. Why do you guys bully my character? I don't get it. This is coming from Grey Burrito, which is just a... That's a horrible thought. It's, it's a great username, Horrible Vision. Greetings and salutations, everyone. This will be my first time I post on this subreddit or any non-new Pokemon Snap subreddit, as far as I can remember. So please go easy on me for my formatting or storytelling isn't up to par. It's also quite long, which isn't a problem. It's not that long. I've been listening to D&D horror stories from YouTube channels like Crispy's Tavern and D&D Doge. Never heard of them. If you read this, give the light kitten some extra treats for me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they, they asked for likes. Woo. Woo. So I decided to share the only real horror story I've experienced. I should start off by mentioning that this was my first ever role-playing campaign. It was also like five years ago, so my memory is a tad fuzzy on the details, so bear with me. The cast are me, a dragonborn sorcerer, half-elf paladin, my friend who somehow manages to nat one 85% of his rolls and ends up dying in very silly ways nearly every session. Not relevant to this story, though. Human fighter who has a tendency to gamble his life over dumb. Just over dumb. Sums it all up. <laughs> GM, the GM. And then we have the human rogue, the problem player who lives by that's what my character would do. I'm not gonna pull out the sock puppet. I I'm just gonna maybe maybe we'll see. No promises, but I'll leave him I'll leave him tucked behind the monitor for right now where he lives. The game was Pathfinder. This was my first ever role playing experience with my first ever friends group. Sounds good. Right away during character creation, the rogue kept arguing that they should have a buff to their racial bonus because humans only get an extra feat and plus two racial bonus to any ability score of their choice. It was This apparently was really underpowered. When we suggested they could just play another race, they said, but I want to play a human, and it isn't fair I don't get any dark vision. They argued over this for well over half an hour before finally accepting that the rest of the party did not think we should give her a buff for being human. So I'm, I'm hoping you stood your ground, because it says that you, the party did think that, but I don't think that's what you meant. And yeah, if, if you gave in to like someone bitching at you for half an hour, then yeah, suckers. But yeah, you don't give in to that. The rules are the rules. And people shouldn't be asking for handouts, like likes. Why don't you guys give me a like there? You know, if anyone's watched this far, the magical comment to put in the comments is, give me likes, because I like to have artificial interaction with my videos. <laughs> don't do that. I don't care. <laughs> Once in-game, the rogue was very into their character and played them as how they would act. The problem, however, was that they liked playing in their words, Ale characters. <laughs> Who doesn't like that? Who in multiple battles decided to run away and leave the party to fight while they just sat around? <sighs> oh my gosh. I'm going to call timeout right there. Listen, as a DM and as a player, the group has to have a reason to be together. If you have a type of player who doesn't want to be with a group or would is the kind of player who a group would not tolerate that character isn't suitable in in most role playing campaigns because if they, if they, if if they don't trust you or the group doesn't like you or you betray the group or the group feels you're a threat or you're a threat to their mission that they're willing to die for they would never tolerate you being around. And as the DM, you really need to express to your characters. Like I, like I tell my group oftentimes when we're starting up a new adventure or mini-adventure, I'll say, listen, you can play an evil character, but the other party members either need to not know or your evil has to be in such a way that it makes them willing to tolerate your presence. So, huge red flag there. That's like, uh, It sounds like you guys are maybe new role players five years ago when this was going on. Time in. Okay, this includes boss battles, which often left the party in bad shape, since, you know, we were one player short for major fights. Yeah. Whenever we were in town and they were short on money to buy whatever it is they wanted, they would resort to pickpocketing from me for gold, since I was very bad at noticing it. Oof. 
timeout. New group, new DM, allowing PvP, because stealing from people is PvP. Listen, the only place PvP really, really belongs is for a touch of color, like where two players are kind of getting aggressive over a, a the, theological debate or something like that, or a plan of attack, you know, branch in the road, you know, left or right, what should the party do? Um, or some little colorful theft like one time to kind of illustrate a personality trait but then never again and always with the buy-in of both players um and i only say that because pvp brings out the worst in players <laughs> so it's, it's oftentimes player versus character it's pvc it very rarely is pvp or cvc which is what it should be right that's why you call it player versus player and not CVC because it's never the character versus the character. It's just the very bad impulses of a player going against another player's character, and then that person takes it personally, and then their impulses are bad, and so it's all PvP. You need CVC or nothing at all. Time in. Whew. And worse yet, uh, once... Uh, at one point, they decided to pickpocket a guard. Oh, my lord, and they got caught. Their solution to this dilemma? Use perception to blame our fighter for the crime, thus getting them arrested. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, that should have been performance or deception to blame the fighter, because it's a lie. But, yeah, that's it's very creative role play. But, wow, I, if the fighter character would then not want to ha be around that rogue anymore we i mean that's that's what the character would do right <laughs> the fighter character another charming quirk of their character was that if they got into big trouble like say piss off eight highly trained armed guards while the rogue was level three they would then try to go full on main character in attempts to ninja run and parkour out of every situation and naturally they get grumpy every time they fail <gasps> They just think, I'm a rogue, I'll just climb up this wall or hop this fence and problem solved. Crime, ass-kicking evaded. <laughs> Eight guys murking me, evaded. <laughs> I just parkoured on the roof, went over the other side, they all lost track of me because they're dummies and I'm a rogue. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. They also had a habit of arguing with other players over any little thing that inconvenienced their character to the point that entire hours would just be arguing over small things like how can you grapple me when i'm a fast rogue and you're a slow sorcerer holding a cane you should have disadvantage on your rolls i was attempting to stop them from stabbing a goblin that had surrendered okay yeah um in beyond which um time out the rogue is fast because their dexterity is high and they they would presumably have an acrobatic skill and so if you're going to have uh, the strength or athletics of the sorcerer or the dexterity acrobatics of the sorcerer versus the rogues, the rogues should be able to be better at that grappling situation because they have a higher dex and acrobatics. Aside from that, you've got nothing else. There's no dodge or anything like that. You're not a ninja. So uh, it sounds like it's just a really immature player and... Uh, yeah, your DM should have just put the kibosh on that kind of stuff. Time in. I had a meeting about rulings, and they stated that GM should have final say, and we should not contest GM. Yeah. Which everyone but them were already doing, but sure, and we agreed, hoping that it would stop the constant interruptions. Of course, it did not. One of my favorite moments was an argument that lasted for three hours about GM's ruling that a nat 20 knowledge check should not give away all information about a creature that literally just came into existence. They did get hints based on the scale patterns that a certain spot is more likely easier to pierce, but they argued that a nat 20 should let them know everything about this eldritch thing that just this very moment entered our universe. The cherry on the Sunday is that this was the session after that meeting about GM having the final say. Suddenly, it went from GM should have the final say to it's a team game and every player should have a say about any ruling. Which, fair enough, it is a team game. And I do believe you can pull the GM aside after the game to talk about concerns about the game, uh, but this is a, a bit much. Yeah, so Poster, you absolutely have it right. By all means, um, 
you can voice a concern in the game, and then the DM can make the decision and then let it go at that. But then, yeah, between sessions is where you really voice stuff or you bring something up that you don't think was addressed properly. I mean, I think we all know that. It's just common courtesy. The idea that you guys went three hours about this kind of stuff, again, it experienced GM. The GM should have just moved the session along whether or not the player was satisfied or was still talking about it. And ultimately, the DM should have just invited the, the, the player to leave and rejoin on the next session when they'd calm down. So, what are you going to do? Ooh, oh, where did I even leave off? Uh, I will admit that this discussion got me rather heated, which is rare. I am the type of person who almost never gets angry anymore. I tend to just get sad instead, but this one really frustrated me, so I did snap and said something really shitty to which I got upset. They got upset. Oh, oh, wow. You're actually... IRL being rude to each other. That's not cool. I apologize for snapping right after I said the things, and honestly, they surprisingly forgave me quite quickly, even though they could justifiably have gotten quite mad at me. It's good on them. It also sounds like maybe the little sniff test, they realize they're, they're being kind of a, a problem, especially if this is three hours in your session. I would have gotten up from the table personally and just left at that point. I would have never tolerated someone wasting three hours of my time. I'm a grown-ass adult. I don't have hours of my life to be wasted by anyone else. Maybe you guys are kids, but even then you shouldn't tolerate it. So just life advice. You know, let, let, let someone waste 15 minutes of your time if pressed. But beyond that, just see you next time. We'll, we'll deal with this later. I got other stuff to do. Just, anything in life, just move on, man. Yeah, so that's, that's dad advice there. Um... The thing that gets me is that the player did not understand why the party in-game did not like their character after all these shenanigans. They cannot fathom how we could not like the character and we were being unfair by being antagonistic against the rogue because they is only doing what their character would do. We were obviously bullying the characters because we didn't like the player. Oh, I'm assuming player stated that. That's tough. That's a that's a quite an accusation. I hope it's not true. I don't think it is. It sounds like the character's behavior in game was exceptionally toxic and unfun and undamaging to the other characters in the group. <sighs> For those wondering why we didn't kick the player, it was the classic fear of friendship getting hurt coming into effect. The player in question was actually the one who got our entire friend group together. Due to other outside reasons, they are no longer talking with the group. But if you read this, I genuinely hope you are doing well and life is going your way. Okay, that's that's good of you to say, original poster. Um, this was years ago? Let me finish, sorry. There was a lot more that happened during our sessions, but this is already long enough, so... I'm going to end it here for now. I do want to end it by saying that despite everything I've written here, the player really wasn't a bad person. They were just going through a lot of the time, and credit where credit is due, they were a great GM who came up with inventive and fun stories in dungeons. Oh. They also got to GM some games, and they did a great job on it, and they didn't argue with themselves about ruling. That's nice. That's nice of you to say. As of late, I've fallen off role-playing games, but the group are talking about starting up a new game, and I have some stuff cooking as well. I hope I didn't bore you all too much, and I wish you all glorious roles and fabulous adventure. That's really kind of you. Um, aside from having to you know parse out a little bit of the formatting, uh, it's a great story. You do mention that it was five years ago, so... You know, you're all a, a lot older now. <laughs> you know, even if you're kids when this went on, five years is a long time. Um, I can definitely see a, 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 a person who's new to role-playing making the mistakes that your your rogue friend was making, thinking that doing all those little annoying things um, is fun or good for the party or will be tolerated. By all means... Having a character role play out the first time they have some new ability, they gained at level three, and they kind of role play it as like they still do it. And it's like, oh, I wasn't really expecting this and this and this. Adding a little bit of color, that's good. That's flavor. And you can have your characters sometimes make a choice that is smart, but they need to learn. 
and they can't keep making those same mistakes and role playing out those same flawed strategies and ideas like stealing from party members over and over and over because to be a high level group and to be adventurers and to be successful in the world they would have to wise up it would be like being a dumb criminal well a dumb criminal is going to do a couple of crimes and then get caught or killed they do not become the epic level 12 rogue they, they, you know, you, yeah, you might make the mistake initially, and you don't take your shoes off. You creak on the creaky floorboard. You break the pick off in the lock, but it, you're you have to get better quickly. If you're a dragon slayer, you're only gonna get like <laughs> one chance to get it right before the dragon gets you. So all those ideas, all those tropes of like, well, I was this way, but then I got wiser, got more powerful, got more experienced, gained you know gained a level. Role play that out, but then but then let it go and say, well, I role played that once. Now it's gone. I I pickpocketed from the player. Now it's gone. I hit on a a, a, a tavern worker romantically one time, and then because just for the trope of doing it, then I move on. I don't do it every single time. Don't do anything over and over and over. Just have your character evolve and move your character through the role play of the world that your DM is is throwing in front of you. So that each session is new opportunities, new things to role play, new things for your character to to learn, to be good at, to fail at, but just don't keep repeating the failures. Um, and certainly, I would hope that the, this person, this rogue, is out there in the world doing good. That's pretty long right there. Um, I love the story. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll, I'll DM you a link to the video if you, you care to watch it. Original poster. Thank you. Gray Burrito? Was it Gray Burrito? Oh my gosh. Was it? Hold on. Wait. I gotta... Then I'll let you go. Gray Burrito. Oh. 